Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and there's something really charming about log cabin quilts. They're probably the most known quilts in the world. They're quick and easy to make, and they're even faster when we get to use two and a half inch strips. And Eleanor Burns is known very well for her quilt in a day, log cabin quilts. Her first edition of this book was in 1978. Today, we have the sixth edition. Her book is full of beautiful log cabin blocks, all made with those two and a half inch strips, different fabrics and different quilt layouts. She talks about how to square them up, how to sew them, how to organize them, and gives us lots of different ways to put them together. She also has a special ruler to cut those two and a half inch strips. We can either buy the strips already pre-cut or we can cut those two and a half strips on our own. This ruler is two and a half inches, so that makes it handy to start off with. All of the cutting directions are on the ruler and with the handout that comes with the ruler. I contacted Quilt in a Day and asked if it was all right that I used the ruler and the book in one of my videos. Not only did they say yes, but they've given us a free pattern that we can use. They've also supplied me with the beautiful fabric that's going to go with this new pattern. And the fabric is called Zellian. And it's going to be available in June. So we get a sneak peek on how pretty this fabric is. The table runner has a nice big border on it and a little border to go around. And then this is going to make the beautiful blocks the log cabin runner has four blocks, so this is going to go together quick and easy. There is a layout on the front page that we're going to be able to use as a reference. If you already have the book, you're going to be able to copy page 33, and it gives us a layout. We're able to put the fabrics along the top and then paste little samples along, and that way we'll have a good visual as we put this together. And here's an example of what the block is going to look like. We have the fabrics in the right color combination, and we're going to see what it looks like at a glance. All of my strips have already been cut at two and a half inches, so I just need to start cutting out the pieces. I'd recommend for the strips of fabric to be pressed and open so there's no fold. We're going to be able to just cut them as we go along. The center of the block is going to start with a blue. All the strips and the pieces for the blocks are all going to be cut first, even before we go to the sewing machine. When we go to use this ruler, it will be very handy if we use this ruler with the words quilt in a day facing up. That way we're going to be able to read the measurements as we go along. And the first thing we need to do is take off the selvage. We can use that ruler to do it with. Use one of those lines and line it up to the edge and trim off the selvage. After that, we just get to cut our pieces. The first one we're going to cut is the center. So we're going to use the center, which is also the L1 line. This is already about two and a half inches, so we can just place it down, line up the edges, and cut our four blocks. No measuring, just use the line. Once we have the center cut out, we need to do the first side to go around that log cabin. It's a light and it's considered L1. The next side would be L2. To short form it on the ruler, we have the L for a light and the D for a dark. For the light side, we have light one and two, light three and four, light five and light six. For the dark side, we have dark one and dark two, three and four, five and six. Those colors and numbers correspond with the measurements on the ruler. So there's no guessing. It's all written right here. I've done the center. So now I'm going to start with the light one. So my next piece is my light one. With each strip, we must remove this salvage. I'm cutting L1, so I'm going to cut right to that first line. It really is a repeat of the center. I have four blocks. I need four pieces. My L1s are going to go to the right 
of that center block. The next one is going to be the L2. It is the same fabric that I cut from the L1. However, this time I'm looking on the ruler for the L2. This piece has already been cut. I'm going to be cutting this longer piece, which is both of these together. So that is the right line to use. So my L2, I will also need four. Once the light two are done, we can put them right on the top. We are going to be able to cut the lights first and the dark second. So let's work on three and four. We're going to need two strips for the lights number three and number four. So we can cut them together. And on the ruler, I'm going to follow up until I get to the L3. I'm not worried about these other lines. I'm only going to use the L3 line and cut my first piece, which means I already have two cut and I only need four. So I'm going to follow up to the L3, square it up and cut. It's going to look like they're not matching up. It's because we haven't cut the dark side yet. Make sure we're using the L4 line and cut. I need my dark five and six. I'm going to be able to continue cutting in the same way. Follow up until you get to your light numbers. And I need the light five and six. Continue and cut all of the pieces that you need. All of the dark and all of the light. Just keep following your L's and your D's. You can also give yourself another little checkpoint by checking off the colors as you cut them. The pieces are cut for all the blocks. We're going to be able to go to the machine and sew this all together. We can lay this out in two different ways to bring it to the machine. We can lay it out in this flat format or you can stack them so that they're going to be in the order that you need to grab as you're going to the machine. So we're going to stack them. The longest logs need to be on the bottom and the shortest one, which is your center one, is going to be at the top. You can stack them from the outside in or from the inside out. My mind works better counting as if I'm sewing it. I'm gonna take that center and place it upside down and the next block will go together, will be there. From here, I'm gonna sew this strip and this strip, this strip, and I'm just going to be able to continue going all the way around, just taking that stack, and placing them all upside down. Now when I flip this over, I'm going to have them in the right order. From my pile, I'll take my first two stacks. My center pile is going to go to the left. The L1 pile is going to go to the right. And I'm going to be able to pick them up and sew them. Start with the bottom piece and line up the top piece. Now I can start sewing. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam and stitch down with that L1 on the top. I can continue and stitch right off the edge. I come off that fabric and I'll pick up my next two pieces. Match up the seams and stitch. The term for this is called chain piecing because you're making one long chain of fabric. Continue stitching your pile together until they're all done. It won't matter if you have four blocks or 20 blocks. It's all the same. We're just going to chain piece them all together. All of these pieces are now chained together. Now I can trim in between those pieces. We're going to press them towards the last square that we've put on, which is the L1. With the stack all in order, it'll be very easy for me to grab the next stack. To make this very simple, we are always going to sew with the newest strip on the bottom. And whatever we've done last is going to be placed up. I take my new pile and bring it to the left. The L2 goes down and this pieced one is going to go on top. You always end up sewing with the newest piece on the bottom and the piece that you just finished sewing on the top facing the machine. And stitch. For pressing, we are always going to press away from the center. It doesn't matter what piece goes on, the seam is always being pressed away from that center. 
I know exactly what color goes next because it's on the top. This is the last row I put on. It's going to go through the machine first. And to know that you're sewing this correctly, your last piece is facing the machine and that seam is facing the machine. Hold that seam down and sew. This last seam is pressed away from the center. By having this little organized system, it's going to really speed up this sewing. So let's continue stitching, going all the way around, following this system. As you press them, stack them so they're all in the same order. And match up two edges. In this case, I've matched up my two lights. From this side, you can now see if the blocks are all the same size. And they don't need to be because we can trim them down. We want to trim them so they're all the same size. So we need to find the smallest one and work from there. And having them stacked this way is going to help because I can go through this corner and find the smallest one and pull it out of the stack. The size that I'm going to square up the smallest block will be the size for all of the blocks. The pattern has the blocks going together so we have this sort of stripe on an angle. But it doesn't mean that is the design you need to do. We can change these up. If all of the squares are going in the same direction, it gives us one look. Switching every other block gives us this mountain look. You can also put these together in fours. If all the lights are in the center, well, that's what we're going to notice. If all the darks are in the center, the darks will be more noticeable. We can change two up and give it a different look. We can still change them yet again. We can also twist them to make a pinwheel. Once we decide on the layout, we can sew them together. Match up our seams and stitch that quarter inch until we have that full row or the four patch done. Once this is all put together, we're going to be able to put two borders on. The first border is cut at an inch and a half. The second border is cut at four inches. That length is going to be determined on how your blocks have turned out. If you've done the big square, it's going to be one size. The long table runner, depending on how you've trimmed these squares up, it's going to be different. I personally like to put the long edges on first. So I'm going to measure that length and cut two borders and put them on either side. Once the two long ends are done, I'm going to be able to get my measurement from the outside of the block. And that's going to give us our first border. The big four inch border is going to be done the same way. We will need a long enough strip to go along both sides, put those on, then put that last border up at the top. We now have a quick and easy log cabin quilt in a day done. The ruler really does speed up the cutting when all of those lines decided for us. We don't have to do any math. We just cut and sew. I'll put a link in the description to the original log cabin ruler, the sixth edition book, and the free pattern. I'd like to take a minute and thank Quilt in a Day for supplying us with the free pattern and for the sneak peek of the new fabric lineup. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.